So the next fan fiction I'll be reading is... Holy shit, look at all the thumbs up this has. Uh, 1,444 thumbs up. And only 22 dislikes. Uh, apparently it's pretty popular. The Sweetie Belle Chronicles, Fragments, Chapter 1, Prologue, by Wanderer D. That's a pretty cool cover photo. Editors and proofreaders, Trevor, Understated Hyperbole, Card Slapter, Fifth Alicorn. It was a gorgeous summer afternoon in Ponyville. The sun shone in the clear sky. The birds sang and flew cheerfully. The leaves on the trees swayed in the gentle breeze. The ponies chatted, worked, baked, and played merrily in the streets. I wish I was out there, thought the young filly as she gazed out the library window. But no, I'm stuck here, studying. She turned a glare at the open tome in front of her. Sweet! Oh, I almost read Rarity's voice. Sweetie Belle! A voice called from the kitchen, snapping around of her reverie. Do you like sugar in your tea? Uh, yeah, Twilight. Just one cube. Okay, one cube it is, came the cheerful reply. The young unicorn grimaced, partly in guilt at her current thoughts and partly because she knew Twilight would turn drinking tea into practice. Here you go, the purple unicorn said with a smile as she set a cup next to her tome. She levitated her own cup a bit longer before she sat, in, sat at the table across from Sweetie Belle. Did you finish the chapter? Uh, the filly looked down guiltfully. The purple unicorn gave her a gentle smile. Don't worry. Now, do you remember the spell we've been working on? The filly nodded. She had been right. Practice time. Yes. Press, press, tid, de, g, tation. Twilight chuckled. It's a long name, I know. Press the digitation. She looked at the younger unicorn expectantly. Press the digitation, Philly repeated, earning a slight nod that was Twilight's way of wordlessly coaxing her on. It's a very simple spell, I mean, an elementary spell that has limited effects, Sweetie repeated from what she could remember of Twilight's rather exhaustive lecture. It doesn't do much, but it allows a unicorn casting it to create ghostly sounds, move small objects, paint things temporarily. She trailed off, struggling to remember more. And, the purple unicorn said, it also allows for a bit of a temperature manipulation. Sweetie Belle blinked. Temporal what now? Temperature manipulation, Twilight repeated. She looked at Sweetie's slightly blank expression inside. In other words, you can cool things down a bit with it or warm them up. Oh, I get it, Sweetie Belle grinned. You dumb bitch. Good, because you're going to use that to cool down your tea a bit so you can drink it. Sweetie Belle looked at her a bit dubious, but nevertheless turned her attention to the cup. A wisp of steam emanated from her tea, a silent statement of how hot it still was. Closing her eyes, she concentrated on the cup, feeling her magic circulate through her body until it concentrated on her horn. However, her mind was clearly not on the task at hand as she noticed when she opened her eyes and found that her tea was now boiling hot. She watched the bubbles despondently until her mentor slowly cooled it down. Twilight sighed and looked out the window. It's okay, sweetie, she said after a moment, trying to maintain her cheery attitude. I know you would rather be doing something else than sitting here with me reading these dusty old books. The younger unicorn almost flinched at the badly disguised undertone of sadness in Twilight's voice. It's not that, Twilight, I promise. The purple unicorn glanced at her. It's just that, I mean, you're a great teacher and I enjoy learning with you, but, well... I miss Skulu and Apple Bloom. Twilight nodded. I know, she said, sipping a bit of her tea, but they're also taking lessons, sweetie. Applejack took Apple Bloom to Appaloosa to learn about their farming techniques, and from there she's taking her all over, from Manhattan to Hoofington, to visit family. It's, Twilight shrugged, a family tradition. Philly nodded. I know. And Skulu is being coached by Rainbow Dash for the freestyle competition, she, she sighed. Last summer was easier. Twilight smiled. Well, it's a sign that you're growing up, she said simply. We all need to learn to, more to be able to be productive ponies of Equestria. I'm still studying under the princess, Sweetie Belle nodded. Yeah. I sent her a message just this morning about taking you as an apprentice, Twilight stated proudly. You told the princess I'm your apprentice? Apprentice. Apprentice? The filly smiled broadly. Yay! That means I'm officially your student! She blinked, smile fading away. But, 
We've been studying for a week now. Why did you only just tell her today? Twilight blushed and looked away. Honestly? I thought you would walk away after the second day, she confessed after a short silence. I thought that, that you would get tired of my lessons, or find them boring, or that I would talk too much and would get annoyed and skip meeting me and go play. Sweetie Belle smiled carefully and decided not to confess she would have done any of those things instead of coming over or not for her, sis her sister making her pinky swear she would attend each class while she was off in Philadelphia. Or else! Regardless of her silence, it must have shown in her face because Twilight's proud smile slowly faded away until it was completely gone. The purple unicorn's shoulders sagged a bit and she looked at the so softly steaming cup of tea held in her ma magic grasp for a few seconds. She stirred the tea morsely. Oh, Sweetie Belle gulped. I'm sorry, Twilight, she said after a moment. I really do want to go out and play. She cringed when she saw the unicorn's shoulders sag a bit more. You're tearing her apart. But I I am enjoying studying with you, she said a bit reluctantly. She knew it wasn't fair to make Twilight feel bad. The studious unicorn was only trying to help her. Twilight dared a small smile. I sometimes forget that not every pony loves studying as much as I do, she chuckled. And cheerily keeps reminding me that taking a break is a good idea. She smiled as she looked up at the surprised filly. I'm glad you told me the truth. I'm glad you like my classes, sweetie. Why don't we close the tomes, finish our tea, and I'll treat you to some ice cream. She's going to be social? That never happens, like, ever. The younger unicorn's eyes lit up. Really? Twilight smiled. Why, yes. You've been very good, sweetie. You've been studying for five hours straight. Who the fuck studies that long? I'm in a college for... I would say college frat boys. They don't study at all. They just go to parties and wear togas. But I'm in a... The nerdiest of nerds study for five hours straight. The filly blinked. Had it really been that long? Maybe... Maybe I'm enjoying this more than I thought. It wasn't long before the two unicorns were ready to go. Spike, we're going out for a bit. Could you watch the library for me, my number one assistant? Sure thing, Twilight, the dragon called back from the upper level, where he was shelving books. Good, the purple unicorn smiled. Ready, sweetie? Ready. The sky was starting to darken by the time Twilight sparkled, and Sweetie Belle decided they had taken enough of a break. Twilight? Yes, sweetie? The pair was lying down in the grass, listening to Lyra strum her lyre nearby in the dying light of the afternoon. I'm, so, I'm sorry I made you feel like I didn't like your lessons. They have finished our ice cream, which, have, which had been a momentous occasion since Sweetie Belle managed to hold it with her magic from beginning to end, something she had never done before. The purple unicorn smiled and nuzzled the crusader. Oh, God, this is going to be a clop thick. It's okay, sweetie. I can see that you were studying hard, and today you managed to levitate your ice cream from the moment we bought it until you finished it. I don't think yesterday you could have done that. That's a huge leap. Sweetie Belle smiled, pleased with the praise she was receiving. The pair stood up and strolled through the park on their way to the library. I think I know what to teach you tomorrow, Twilight mused on the way. Sex! Really? Yes, it's a bit more complicated, but I can start teaching you the basis for the spell. What is it? Twilight smiled. Well, given how you and the other crusaders got given to so much trouble, how does this shield spell sound? The little filly's eyes widened. You really think I can do that? Only one way to find out. As they approached the town proper and were just a few blocks away from the library, they heard several shouts. Turning to look at the source of the commotion, both unicorns stepped back as the two very two angry-looking wolves in chains and metal muzzles pulled a wagon to the plaza. Sweetie Belle blinked in confusion, but Twilight immediately groaned. Oh, Celestia, why her? Who? The filly asked, confused. Please be Trixie. Uh, um, let's see. Five, four, three, two, one. Watch it! Oh, yes! That was the total guess, man. I'm gonna laugh. It's Gilda, not Trixie. I'm like, fuck! I'll, not, I'll stop reading. Watch in awe, a voice demanded as the wagon stopped in the middle of the plaza. Blue smoke rolled over the ground and into the air as fireworks lit up the sky, drawing every pony together around the wagon as it unfolded into a stage, but still keeping a healthy distance from the wolves. An explosion in the stage made them look up as a mare in a cape and magician's hat reared on her hind legs and addressed the crowd. As the great and powerful, I cannot roll my R's. Trixie performs the most amazing feats of magic and ingenuity. 
Ooh, Sweetie Belle clapped her hooves ex together excitedly. A show pony! Let's go watch! Twilight shook her head inside as she followed the excited Sweetie Belle into the crowd. In an instant, Trixie's eyes had found the purple unicorn. I see, she said with, with scorn. Twilight Sparkle is here again, to challenge Trixie! Twilight groaned and glanced, glared at the show mare. Trixie, I don't care about challenging you. You said you were here to perform. Go ahead. I won't interrupt you. The blue unicorn laughed. Trixie sees that you have learned your rightful place. She looked down at the crowd. Very well. If you are not here to interrupt, the great and powerful Trixie shall amaze you all. With a wave of her hoof, the two snarling wolves were levitated to stand on the stage on either side of her. Censor the, since her departure from this town over a year ago, the great and powerful Trixie has undertaken a glorious quest, a quest of legendary proportions. She has toured the great marvels not only of Equestria, but of the world beyond its borders, and recently, the most magnificent Trixie captured not one, but two of the most feared and infamous creatures in all of Equestria. Wow, Sweetie said, that's amazing. Period, period, period. Twilight seemed to be about to say something. Her eyes were fixed on the wolves, brows wrinkled in concentration. Those wolves! Behold! Trixie shouted, pointing with one hoof on, on the wolf on her left. Romulus! Twilight's eyes became pinpricks. Trixie's other hoof slowly swept to point at the other wolf on her right. And Remus! Amazing! Sweetie Belle jumped up and down amongst the gasp of awe and amazement, escaping the multitude of ponies around them. Trixie! Every pony stopped to look at Twilight. The showman growled. What is it, Twilight Sparkle? The great and powerful Trixie has a show to perform, if you don't recall. Are you insane? You caught Romulus and Remus and chained them in iron? Twilight's eye twitched. Trixie snorted. The great and powerful Trixie is not a moron, nor is she an incompetent fool. She did not use simple iron. Twilight sighed and a trembling smile crept into her face. Uh, of course, Trixie. I'm sorry, I forgot you have traveled all over Equestria. Trixie smiled and nodded. The great and powerful Trixie has! So you know a lot of the legends and myths of the world. Yes, yes, Trixie knows many legends, the show mayor said. So you would have, of course, used at least silver thread among magically engraved and enhanced iron shackles with the appropriate runes that etched in silver or even platinum. The great! What? Trixie had begun to nod again, but stopped as her mind worked out what Twilight was saying. And, Celestia's apprentice sat down, relieved, you would have accounted for the fact that tonight is a full moon, so you would have included a moon energy absorption spell. Trixie! Wait. The blue unicorn was starting to get nervous as the oblivious purple unicorn continued. Sw Sweetie Belle was starting to get a bad feeling as her mentor kept talking. Trixie kept stammering, and ponies all around them started shuffling away from the stage. Um, Twy? I'm really sorry, Trixie. I don't know why I would have doubted that a professional show mare would know to take the appropriate precautions when dealing with legendary war creatures. The crowd looked e expectantly at Trixie, who took two steps back. Were creatures? She managed to ask weakly. Why, yes, the purple unicorn, still oblivious to the growing panic, carried on. Like war weasels, war chickens, and other variations of the link. Lysanthropic effect. These big words. Sweetie Belle gulped when she saw Twilight Sparkle's expression change to one of horror as Trixie's cringing finally dawned on her. You didn't know? The purple unicorn gaped. A hush fell over the crowd as Twilight looked to the horizon in horror as the sun finally set and the moon began an ascension. The celestial orb casting its silvery light over the town of Ponyville. The growling of the wolves stopped. Sweetie Belle turned to look at them, a chill running down her spine. They were growing. The wolves had already been large, about the size of Big Mac, and while they had looked feral and dangerous, the chains and muzzles on them had given the citizens of Ponyville a sense of safety. But now the wolves grew. Their chains snapped to one another after, with an almost musical cadence, an illusion of safety was shattered. Their forelegs bulged along their, with their paws, which extended into clawed hands. The fur on their shoulders and back became darker and thicker. They stood on their hind legs, which also became solid masses of muscle, easily keeping their bodies upright. Their lips curled back in a snarling smile, yellow fangs almost seeming to glow in contrast with their black coats. The iron muzzles burst as their heads grew 
and now the werewolves were easily three times the size of Big Macintosh, apparently hungry. Sweetie Belle screamed, the sound snapping the paralyzed ponies into action as every pony ran for their lives. In front of them, the two t werewolves turned their attention to Trixie with malevolent smiles on their faces. The showmare took a look at them, and immediately her horn blazed into life. Chains magically wrapped themselves around the two creatures as Trixie took a step back, her eyes narrowing in concentration. For a moment, Sweetie held hope that it would be enough to stop them, but Trixie's next actions burst that small bubble of hope. Catch! The showmare shouted, her magic levitating both creatures into the air as they started breaking the chains with little effort and threw them into the crowd, straight towards Twilight and Sweetie Belle. Twilight's magic flared in response to the threat. For a moment, she ca caught both creatures in, in the air, but their continuous struggle made it really difficult for her to keep them in place. Trixie immediately cast another illusion spell, creating blue mists around her and her wagon. When it dissipated, they were gone. As the ponies around them ran around about in a crazed frenzy, the younger unicorn pressed close to her mentor. Twilight! What do we do? Just stay close, sweetie, Twilight ordered through clenched teeth unexpectedly. One of the panicking ponies crashed into the purple unicorn and sent her sprawling to the ground, disrupting her concentration. You dumbass. It's like Black Friday all over again. The word creatures landed right in front of them. Sweetie screamed and jumped back as a clawed hand tore to the ground where she had been seconds ago. Sweetie, run! Twilight shouted, jumping between her and the werewolves. Horn glowing bright, but a backhanded swipe to her the face knocked her to the ground. The young unicorn ran, her eyes wide in panic as she searched wildly, quickly for a place to hide. Behind her, she heard the werewolves howl and the excited yips of a predator on the hunt drawing closer. She ran around the corner of a building and dove behind several several trash cans, hoping that the smell of rotting food would throw the wolf off her trail as she cowered in fear. She couldn't see it, but she could still hear the creature just slow down and growled. The pads on its feet silenced its steps, but the creature's deep, rumbling breaths threatened to make her scream and reveal her location as it slowly approached her hiding place. Sweetie Belle cringed as she searched her mind for any possible way out of, out of this situation. There was no twilight right next to her, or even Fluttershy to use her stare and scare the monster away. Her sister would have at least been able to use her magic to fight it off. It was getting closer now. From between the trash cans, the filly could see other stacks of boxes and trash in the small alley. She was in between Sugar Cube Corner and Ponyville's four-star restaurant, the Clover. Not five-star? Okay, that sucks. So there was a lot of trash around. An idea began to form in her mind, as she remembers Twilight's l earlier lesson. Hoping that the trash cans around her disguised her and her horns light well enough from the werewolf, Sweetie concentrated on conjuring up the simplest spell she knew. Something shifted in a trash pile further up the alley from where she was hiding, clattering to the ground. The sniffing stopped and the world was silent, but for the distant shouts outside the alley, she could hear the cat creature's breathing. It was calmer now. She could almost sense it looking intently at the pile on the other end of the alley. Fighting to keep quiet and even afraid to breathe, she tried again, but this time she varied the spell. From the pile of trash came a soft, whimpering voice. With a scratch of claws scraping the ground, the werewolf bounded forward to land with a howl on top of the pile, its claws torn to the bags, ripping through ba woods and bags full of trash as they sought their prey. Sweetie Belle carefully slid out from beneath the, behind the trash cans and, without taking her eyes off the werewolf, slowly backed out of the alley. Her heart was beating wildly inside her chest, and she feared that it would give her away to the wolf. As she stepped back and slowly, as silently as she possibly could, she backed into a trash can. The metal lid slid off, scraping its way to the edge of the trash can before it clanged onto the ground beside her. The werewolf whipped its head around, eyes a blaze of anger at having been tricked. Sweetie Belle turned and galloped away, desperately trying to find help or another place to hide. But despite her best efforts, there was nowhere to hide, and being in the middle of the plaza, she could only weave through discarded carts and spilled goods in trying to put off her seemingly inevitable fate. A paw came down hard on her, knocking the filly off her hooves. The world spun around clay crazily around her and she found herself on her back, gasping for breath as the wolf's muzzle hovered over her face. There was a vicious gleam in his eyes and Sweetie Belle knew this was it. I... She gasped and closed her eyes tightly. Goodbye, sis. There was a shout and suddenly the weight of the werewolf was gone. Sweetie Belle opened her eyes to see Big Macintosh standing protectively over her, glaring at the werewolf now sprawled out on its side. Slowly, the beast stood up, growling fiercely at the draft pony. 
Good job, Big Mac! Twilight shouted as she slammed the growling werewolf with its pack mate, sending both to the ground in a dazed heap. The purple unicorn galloped at her side and took a quick look at her apprentice. Are you okay, sweetie? The filly was barely able to nod. Her body was shaking so much. Twilight turned a fierce look onto the werewolves. No pony, no creature, no monster threatens my student! She growled as her magic enveloped her body. A blast of magic shot into the air and storm clouds formed high above them, slowly obscuring the moon. The werewolves howled in anger as gleaming chains broke through the windows of a nearby forge, wrapping tightly around them, reinforced by magic. The ends of the chains then buried themselves into the full floor of the plaza, pitting them to the ground. Metal bars followed, slamming down one after the other around the were creatures until they were completely surrounded. A large piece of metal landed roughly atop the makeshift cage, sealing them inside. Big Mac, did you get it? Twilight shouted, her magic pulsating as she struggled to restrain the creatures, chains and all. Hey, yep. Stallion quickly moved to the side and brought a cart filled with silver, plates, colliery, and even a vase or two. Oh, God. You gotta sneeze. Is this enough, Twilight? <laughs> Jesus. Excuse me. Ugh. This enough, Twilight? The purple unicorn's answer was to levitate the entirety of the cart's contents and, in an amazing feat of magical strength, crunch them around the bars in the middle top of the cage. It was crude, but soon the bars all had metal colliery covering them. With another pulse of magic, two more ch long chains crossed on top of the metal slab that was keeping the wolves inside and buried themselves on the floor of the plaza. Twilight then released her magic and collapsed, exhausted, right next to a now completely in awe sweetie belt. The wolves broke the first set of chains now that there were no magic to reinforce them, but each time one of the creatures left the bars, they would howl in pain and growl. The cage was makeshift, but they would be contained. Twilight, that was incredible! Sweetie gushed, grinning ear to ear at the collapsed unicorn. I'm just glad you're okay, sweetie. Twilight whispered, chest heaving from exertion but smiling. She nuzzled the younger unicorn as other ponies began to venture back to the palace. Plaza, sorry. What'd I say, Clopfic? Oh god, this is long. That Trixie should be arrested, a pony shouted as a contingent. A unicorn from Canelot slowly transferred the wolves into a more secure cage the next day. To say the citizens of Ponyville were not happy with the showmare would be a gross understatement. They were livid, furious even. Although the Ursa Minor had ravaged the town, destroying many buildings, it was the fact that one so young had nearly died that inflamed the hearts of Ponyville citizens. Buildings they could replace. Sweetie Belle, no pony could. Fight her and throw her into a dungeon. Oh, that's Aloe. I can't do Swedish. Find her and throw her to a dungeon, da! Aloe added, the spa, spa pony stomping a hoof, her eyes ablaze with righteous anger. Strip her of her magic, a pegasus shouted, more than one unicorn wincing at the suggestion, although none of them looked inclined to disagree with the punishment. Twilight and Sweetie Belle stood side by side, silently watching the proceedings as the crowds began to shout more and more for the showmare's head, or at least her arrest. The Canterlot unicorns were hard-pressed to keep a professional look as the town almost rioted right then and there. Twilight? The young filly looked up at the purple unicorn. Yes, sweetie? I really want to learn magic, the cru crusader said, looking at the snarling wolves. I never want to be so scared again. Twilight smiled and nuzzled the younger unicorn. I'll do my best. Morning, sweetie, Twilight said brightly as the filly made her way down the stairs of the library. The white unicorn yawned and waved the hoof. Morning, Twy. Morning, Spike. It had been a week since the incident with the werewolves, and she was still having trouble sleeping. Hi, sweetie, Spike said, poked out of the kitchen. Guess what I made? Pancakes! The filly smiled as she made her way to the table, where she joined Twilight. What's the plan for today? Some, not a girly voice. What's the plan for today, Twy? I should be receiving a few things from Canterlot, the purple unicorn said. I requested some books and devices to help your training along with some items from my own studies. The little unicorn sighed as she looked at the gorgeous day outside. I know I asked her to teach me as much as she could, but we haven't had a break in days. Twilight caught the filly looking outside and smiled gently. But don't worry too much about it, sweetie. Why don't you take a break? I have to unpack a lot of sensitive equipment, and it's a lovely day outside. You could visit Pinkie Pie or Fluttershy while I do that. Really? The white unicorn bounced up and down. Yay! She hugged Twilight. 
It'll best twilight.